So um, the first thing is, why is the optic nerve so precious enough to warrant an entire Congress on it? So it is, of course, the magic cable. And uh, the retinal ganglion cells, which collect the pictures focused on the retina, transmit these to the CPU, that is the brain. And once we have that, it's processed. And that's when we have sight. So without this optic nerve or the cable which is transmitting these images, we won't be able to see them. And why should it be helpful? You want to detect abnormality and you want to objectively follow it up. So glaucoma, and this is Dr. Weinrib's famous glaucoma continuum uh, diagram, which shows it's a continuum. So it's, it progresses from early asymptomatic, undetectable disease to advanced glaucoma and blindness, and therefore the optic nerve may be abnormal without detectable glaucoma, and that's where it's important. So how I wish we could all image by just looking into each other's eyes. And for those youngsters who aren't familiar with Red Butler and Scarlett O'Hara, okay, I wish we could do that, but we can't. So this actually is the first record of fundus pictures. They were by Jackman and Webster way back in 1886. This was the first fundus camera, and these are the first images of the optic nerve, which was published in the Philadelphia Photographer. Since then, of course, we've had rapid developments, and uh, I wish this would, okay. So this video is not working, but this video shows that how you can now have imaging devices in your pocket, and your smartphone is good enough. So, oh, sorry. So the outline today, we look at the devices we have to image the optic nerve. We are all familiar with the optical coherence tomography or the OCT. The other that we have is the HRT. We do have a new kid on the block on imaging, so I'll talk a little bit about the ganglion cell analysis, and we'll go through some real-world situations. So in the last decade or so, when we've had the OCT, we've looked at a number of things and they were all questions that came to our mind. So we looked at the glaucoma spectrum and how the RNFL is visualized there. We looked at whether in disc suspects you could correlate uh, an FDT with an OCT. We also saw that the corneal thickness actually correlates with the RNFL thickness and ocular hypertensives, which might explain why thinner corneas tend to progress more to glaucomas because they have an inherently thin RNFL. Then we also saw that on the stratus, the fixed diameter scan was enough to image a range of optic disc diameters, and the new machines don't have different diameter circles for it. We looked at the effect of trabeculectomy on the RNFL, and we saw that the published reports of early thickening was actually just an artifact of probably early edema, and you don't need to go back and change your baseline. When we went down the line, we looked at the stratus OCT for progression and followed it up with the cirrus, and we saw that the structural imaging tools are useful for early disease, but as the disease goes on, you actually need visual fields or functional assessment to pick up progression better. We also looked at whether you could correlate the stratus and the cirrus. They are absolutely different machines, so you couldn't do one for the other. And we also saw that the reproducibility of the spectral domain was better than what the stratus gave us. So this, in fact, was the RNFL thickness analysis and the major things that we've done on the OCT and the glaucoma. Then came this new kid on the block. And would it work? I mean, glaucoma is, after all, a loss of retinal ganglion cells, and 50% of RGCs are centered in the central 4.5 millimeters. So the peak ganglion cell density here is about 15,000 per millimeter square. And this is supposed to be less influenced by optic disc tilt and myopic elongation. But then when we looked at the GCA on the, on the cirrus versus the RNFL, we didn't really find any difference in the diagnostic acumen or the discriminative ability. So I'll just take you through a little bit of the GCC and also as how to look at the OCT because we've somehow been centered with the TISNET graph which we are familiar with on the stratus OCT. So this is a set of 
near normal optic nerves, normal visual fields. And then this is the OCT that we conventionally know of, and this is what the GCA would look at. So I just like to take you through this bit here, which we don't really look at. Now this here is actually the RNFL deviation map, and we don't look at that so much because we are so used to seeing the double hump pattern, which is down here. And as we go by, I'll show you how it's important to recognize this as well. This, in effect, is like the mean deviation of your visual fields. Remember, the RNFL deviation map here is actually, uh, I don't know if you can, all right, so the RNFL deviation map actually has 200 and 200 spots in which the B scan or the OCT scan actually measures it. And this 3.4 mm diameter circle is only extracted from here. So if you're only going to look at the TISNIT graph, we're going to be missing a lot of information that would be given. So I'll show you how. So if we just go to the next one, this if you can, if you can pick up this little bit here, this, this little thing here is a little notch. It's picked up on the visual field. And as you go along, it's picked up on your OCT as well. But if you look at the deviation map, which I was talking about here, if you could see down here, it shows you that RNFL defect come up on the deviation map because it is the portion of the retinal nerve fiber which is deviated compared to the normative database. And this is something that we miss. And if you look at the GCA, you would see the early ganglion cell loss here. And in effect, if you put these two together, this is the sort of information that we hitherto did not see come up. I think one of them haven't, have, hasn't come up, but if you could see the ganglion cell, so this is the ganglion cell, and it is along with the retinal nerve fiber layer, which is somewhere there. So this next picture hasn't come up, but this retinal nerve fiber layer on the deviation map it can be superimposed on the ganglion cell, and we can pick up the entire gamut of where the ganglion cell is being lost and how it translates into a retinal nerve fiber layer defect. Of course, if you look at advanced glaucomas, you neither need the RNFL nor the ganglion cell to pick this up clinically. You need this and you need the visual fields to follow up this patient because all of your imaging and your OCT is going to be read. Now, having seen this, I'd like you to see one more thing. Now, this patient, if you see closely the right eye, it should be evident that it has a little bit of a notch and a superior RNFL defect. I'm not sure it's come up too well. Maybe you can see it better on the red free. So you can see this superior RNFL defect, which is quite evident. And if you do the visual field, so this, this is the defect there. And if you see the OCT deviation map, can you see that? So if you see just the TISNET graph, it's all green, except for that little bit of quadrantic defect which comes up. But if you really see the, this isn't coming up. Your uh, pointer isn't coming up. OK, anyway. So um, that RNFL uh, defect is coming up well on the deviation map. And then as we go further, you see that a corresponding visual field defect comes up in the right eye, which corresponds to that little bit of a quadrant there. And then if you see the GCC, the right eye is all green. So importantly, if you understand what is going on, this RNFL defect here is actually quite vertical. So the defect is translating to ganglion cells beyond this annulus which your machine is picking up. So if this annulus was bigger, this RNFL defect would have gone on and you would have picked up ganglion cells there. But it's bypassing the ganglion cells which have not been lost in this central area and therefore a normal GCC in this patient does not mean no glaucoma. So this just illustrates the importance of understanding your imaging and correlating it to your clinical diagnosis and your clinical acumen. The next thing that we have to image is the Heidelberg retinal tomogram, which sadly has not been used as much as it should have. 
It's a series of images of the optic nerve which are collated and gives you a 3D image of your optic nerve head. And this is what the quintessential HRT image of a glaucomatous patient would look like, right here. So having this plate or having this tray in front of us, the question is, what is it that you order? So you do have the HRT, you have RNFL on the OCT, you have ganglion cell analysis on the OCT, but you also have your 90D and your slit lamp and your brain and your eye, so you can just image on structure. So when the OCT is of no use, you have patients like this with peripapillary atrophy. Now, these myopic patients with large peripapillary atrophic areas are not going to be segmented by your OCT no matter what you do. So it's patients like this where your HRT is going to be of immense use because this and this on the other side is telling you that the optic disc rim at least falls within the normative database of the HRT's optic disc rim and cup to disc image ratio. So these are patients which do well on imaging on the HRT and to follow up because it's the same part which is going to be imaged throughout. But know what you order. So this patient who was an old steroid responder and has very small discs, if you see carefully, also has an RNFL defect in the inferior part. And if you see that, the, the visual field picks that up too. But the HRT tells you that it's normal because it's a small disc and the HRT is not picking up a small cup to disc ratio which it believes is normal. And here your, your OCT is going to show up better because the RNFL defect is picked up. On the other hand, if you have these large discs and you have a large physiological cup with normal visual fields, your HRT tells you it's abnormal because it thinks that this large cup to disc ratios have to be glaucoma. But you need to know it's not that and you need to know what to order in order to be able to follow them up better and this is a normal OCT with physiological cups, right? The other thing to remember is image quality could affect your imaging. So uh, quality which goes down shows up as progression when actually there's no progression there. And this, once you do a better image, the progression also seems to disappear with time. All cupping may not be glaucoma. We've talked about non-glaucomatous cupping. So the GCA could be a, a valuable tool, this 19-year-old young girl. 660 vision and 12 pressures. And the OCT shows up some little bit of red on temporal sides. But one very important thing here is the ganglion cell which goes completely before the RNFL goes. So if you have decreased vision, normal pressures and temporal pallor, look for a ganglion cell because now it's been shown that progressive ganglion cell loss before the RNFL damage in LHON is a useful thing to look for. Now look at this patient, right? 60-year-old, 14 and 18 pressures, right discs look normal. The left disc has a notch, has an optic disc hemorrhage, and has RNFL defect, and it has visual field loss. Why would you say this is not glaucoma? And yet, your OCT says it's not glaucoma. So don't believe your machine. Now, what do you think is happening here? So what we've seen is with acute disc hemorrhages, probably there's extravasation around the neuroretal rim there. And the RNFL thickness is measured as thicker than what it is, but it doesn't mean that at that point there is no disease. So green does not mean normal and red does not mean glaucoma, is the one message that you need to get back when you talk about optic nerve imaging. So to summarize, the approach to any patient depends on what it is. And what it is, is evident more often by sound clinical examination and clinical judgment than any imaging. Red on imaging, as I said, does not mean it's glaucoma. It could be, of course. But it could be a glaucomatous disc due to past insult. It could be a non-glaucomatous cup disc. And it just could be a very bad scan. And green on imaging is not always normal either. I acknowledge the support at the PGI. These are the residents, Jamyang, Raghu, Samyak, Jayesh, Natasha, Pankaj. These are the ones who've helped in publishing all that. 
and our workhorses for all of us. Thank you.